Welcome to today's broadcast. This is the Lance Wallace Show, and I'm got Mercedes Sparks is right here, by the way, in the studio with me. I didn't change my outfit. You didn't change your I didn't either. So we're both black on black. Look at this. I have green, but go ahead. I look like two assassins. Two ninjas. Ninjas. Ninja now, sheep. Now, now, I want to talk about this one thing. We just came back from Canada. So Mercedes, we just flew in, literally. Now, I've been in Vienna. Was I in Vienna? Yeah. You sound Vienna so bougie. Vienna and Prague. Huh? That sounds so bougie. I've been in Vienna. I've been in Prague. Covering news and broadcasting from these various I know. locations. Just give me a hard time. I don't really care. Is it bougie? It's not... <laughs> I should, should I start over? No, no, it's great. No, I think it's fine. I, I'm, we're, but I was at my son got married. So I exactly. went over there for a week and uh, Carl got married. I'm glad to say so. So then I went over there because he wanted to get married in Prague. Not, nothing unusual about that. As already, doesn't everyone get married in a foreign country? So he wanted to do that. So we just did it. <laughs> my children were all taught to think out of the box. Anyway, so we, uh, and then, then on the way back, I remember the Hamas attack happened while I was over there. And it was so weird because as I'm thinking about what am I going to say I'm with Annabelle, you know, for a day or two, I said, honey, we'll have some time after the wedding and take two or three days before we come home, trying to make it kind of a, a, a Annabelle time. And we went to a museum and I'm there, but the building is, is uh, it's a, it was originally like some Duke's residence. It was finally the residence of Archduke Ferdinand. And I'm standing there looking at the history of the place and thinking, I got to do a broadcast tonight. It really bothered me because I'm saying somebody mentioned in one of the, uh, you know, news sources that I was kind of like spying out on during my time there that maybe it was Jack Posobiec said the danger with Israel and Hamas right now, it's not like a meta, it's not an analogy like the second world war. It's more like the first world war, which is the unintended alliances that get entangled. So what you have here is Iran trying to create, foment a global disruption. They love nothing more than to see global chaos. And you've got Turkey with Erdogan, now with a million people giving him what he's always wanted. You know, he can put on his cape and say, I am the deliverer for the Muslim movement. I am the Messiah you've been waiting for. And so this thing could go south very fast. But when I realized I'm literally at the Archduke Ferdinand's residence, he was the, him and his wife were assassinated. Um, by a Serbian assassin. And it literally catalyzed the First World War, not because of his deaths per se, but because of Russia's alliance with him and Germany's alliance, and then England against Russia and Germany, and then the United States getting sucked into England's battle. What I'm saying is, <laughs> it was weird that I'm at the residence where the First World War literally you know, I was in the house of the guy that didn't come home that day. And I'm thinking, dear God, we got to pray against the expansion of this. But we're living in a time now where whole nations are more coming under the political rulership than ever before. Have you noticed? It's like if Donald Trump isn't elected in the next cycle, whoever is at the helm of our government, it seals a fate for this nation. I'm sorry, you just know it. But in Canada, we just came back from Canada mm -hmm. and we went up uh, Mercedes, Melody, uh, me, we went up for a conference I had to do, but it was like an old Great Awakening conference in Canada. And we were shocked to see how they're stuck still in the, you know where we were a year and a half ago with masks and with mass vaxes and with, you know, they just literally got permission to leave the country, I think, recently, mm -hmm. um, if they're not vaccinated. They, they have clamped down like a totalitarian in ways that we we don't, they're the canary in the coal mine is what I'm saying. That Canada is what Marxism, progressivism, and insanity looks like when you have the next generation setting policy. Go ahead. What do you got to say? Oh, it's wild. I mean, to hear from these Canadians of the type of oppression that they're under, they were telling me that, and I just pulled the article up here, the most recent thing within like the last week is that there were two men on like the equivalent of a metro or a subway that we're talking about uh, this march. It's called the Million Person March. It's related to like LGBT and they're having a private conversation on the train. Somehow it was reported. And by the time they got to their destination, they were arrested and handcuffed at that destination for a private conversation on a train. It wasn't until May that if you weren't vaxxed, you were allowed to enter back into the United States. I mean, just people couldn't visit family. But you, you, you understand what she's saying? She's saying they have these cameras now that are recording you 
And then they're, they're, they're listening to you. And if you say, well, I'm going to do the march there. You know, we got to stop this. Boom. You become arrested for, this is like dictation. This is like mm -hmm. a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. uh, young guy, jo Josh Alexander, I interviewed him. Actually, I interviewed him uh, in a back hallway, and I posted it on Facebook for you guys. We could actually put it in the show if you want. I don't know if I, I, I should play, it. I should play a part of it for you. 17-year-old mm -hmm. gets arrested twice, kicked out of his Catholic school because uh, basically he's uh, outspoken about boys in the girls' men's room and being wrong, gets kicked out of the school. His parents get fired as teachers because Catholic of the school. Son. It's a Catholic school. And it's a cat. That's, yeah, it's not even a secular school. It's not, you know, Soros Academy. It's a Catholic school. But I wanted to get away with Josh here to tell you the story of how this incredible young guy has taken on the system in the spirit of Trump and the, in the youth and energy of Charlie Kirk. I'm impressed with what he's doing. Josh, tell him your story. Yeah, sure. So um, last year I was kicked out of the Catholic school board. Um, and informed that uh, I wouldn't be allowed to return to class. Unless... This is the Catholic school, not yeah. a regular sec. I, yeah. I missed that, bro. It's even crazier. Done. Yeah, so I'm not a Catholic, but I was at a Catholic school. I'm a I'm born again Christian, and uh, I was at this school, and uh, a couple of female students complained to me, and they said that they were concerned that guys were using their washrooms and their facilities. So I spoke out against it. Um, went to the principal, went to the classes. It became a really controversial issue. Anyways, long story short. Um, they kicked me out. They suspended me, put me under investigation for expulsion. Um, and then after the lawyers got involved in stuff and they were found to be working illegally outside of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, I decided to attend class against the principal's instruction. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. So you're doing this all in very monotone fashion. Let's get the story straight. The girls are complaining because guys are going to the girls' room. You stand up for the girls and you start saying, hey, this is not good. You challenge the system. They kick you out yeah. of school. You say, I'm going to go to school anyway. You show up. Now you're kicked out again, right? Well, here, now they arrest. Well, they arrested yeah. you. So the principal pulled me into the office, asked to speak with me. I agreed after getting my lawyer on the line. And uh, I was just waiting um, in the office. He tells me some people are on the way to see me. Sure enough, it was the uh, Ontario Provincial Police. And uh, so anyways, they walk into the classroom. They... Uh, place me under arrest. Um. So uh, Josh Alexander, he has two guys with him that are all part of his, his training up his, his, um, his radical rebels. And they're, they're, they're like inspiring walkouts in schools, you know, to protest mask mandates. I admire him. 17 years old. I said, how old is your team? He goes, 13 year old and 15. <laughs> I said, that's so crazy. You mm. gotta love the, the zeal of, of these kids. By the way, people are asking me, the you talk about the the energy of the youth. People have stopped me now because evidently I've I've created a certain amount of awareness. When I'm traveling around, jet lagged as it's possible to be, I got a few things that I'm I'm excited about. And one of them is pure chocolate energy. This is what I do. I pop one or two of these. You know, don't do more than that. I don't want to be responsible for any uh, defibrillation problems out there. No, but, it doesn't make you jittery. You shouldn't say that. It doesn't make no, you jittery. No, but I'm saying, uh, well, the point is, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not, if you're, if don't, don't eat the whole pack. It's like, they're so powerful. They're chocolate antioxidant, polyphenol antioxidants, which are mood and performance enhancers. And the point is, rather than getting jittery, mm -hmm. I used to take a supplement that used to be maybe like that. I couldn't take it. This one is like calms you down, but increases your focus. And I think it's because the chocolate mm -hmm. actually is a, in a sense, the caffeine that's in the chocolate is a different kind of delivery and it's a mood enhancer. So it's a, it really works in harmony with your body to give you that, give you the kind of energy anyway, every day, if I need to do something and I don't, you know, I, and it's not the same as having to go to Starbucks or go get a coffee. You don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be drinking and you got to go to the bathroom when you're my <laughs> I want this. Pure chocolate energy, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm going to say. You want to go to lancewellen.com forward slash energy? Mm -hmm. Mercedes, I know you want to say, so you're jumping in no, there. What do you I want to tell me think, about my energy? I'm just saying, I don't think people realize how many of these things you take per day. But for any time you speak, any time you get up to do, oh, you were just popping some before you got on. That's why I was like, you should you should tell people about these things. You love them. To the point where people track me down at conferences and they're like, hey, where do I get some of those chocolate chewies uh, like Lance is talking about. And I was like, Oh, I'll send you the link. But they're great too. Because like, if you're like my husband, Larry, he doesn't like coffee, but he wants the benefits of a caffeine like hit. And so th those are good. 
alternatives? Well, it's the landswellen.com forward slash energy mm -hmm. solution mm -hmm. to the uh, energy the energy crises that mm -hmm. happens for people like me over 60. Anyway, no yeah. matter what age you are, you'll appreciate them. Landswellen.com forward slash energy. Now, Yale campus newspaper censors pro-Israel writer's column on Hamas beheading of women, beheading of men, raping of women. And uh, the, the newspaper gets censored. The article gets taken down. This is Yale. Our schools are becoming a, um, a den, a, a, a viper's den of dangerous Marxist um, terrorism. Because if you can be cheering for Hamas and, and calling for them to continue their killing of Jews, we saw a, a brief... Uh, Instagram message we put on a previous show, and the lady was talking and saying, you don't understand how shocking this is to a Jew. She said, "It's the, what happened in Israel for us was the equivalent of 51,000 Americans getting killed in a brutal sweeping action by, uh, you know, an adjacent geography, like coming to the United States and killing 51,000 of you and taking a bunch, hundreds of you, a thousand of you hostage. And then the world is saying exercise restraint or cheering your terrorists for doing more damage. They're rooting for them. And it's, it's hard to rationalize, which is why I'm going to talk about the irrational hatred against the Jew and the end time activity of spiritual principalities and powers in this segment. Opinion, nothing has prepared me for the anti-Semitism I see on college campuses. Derek Prince said years ago, he said that the old gods will rise again. Jonathan Kahn's talking about that in his last book that he did. He's got a new one out now. And it has to do with the emergence of the powers and the principalities of, of the old. The old. See, it's almost like Hitler is gone, but then they're setting the stage for a new Hitler to come. And the fact that they're, they're hating Jews is exactly what Nazism was. It's the same stinking spirit, and they're cheering for it. They tried to put it on Trump. They tried to put it on MAGA. They tried to put it on January 6th. They tried to put it on the right-wing conservative people. Never really stuck, but they worked it. But these guys are the personification of race, hatred, and violence. It's just a new form of the swastika on the college campuses now and on the streets. This Jewish man writes, I'm a 70-year-old Jewish man, but never in my life have I seen or felt the anti-Semitism of the last few weeks. I've heard anti-Semitic things from time to time through my life. I remember as a child being called a dirty Jew and my friends and I being called Christ killers. That's really good for evangelizing your Jewish neighbors, by the way. <clears throat> I recall a college girlfriend's parents telling her she shouldn't go out with me because Jews are different. I had an incident in a class I was teaching about the ethics of negotiation where a student matter-of-factly said, well, the other side will try to Jew you down without the slightest sense of how that was a slur. Have you ever, I've actually heard that saying growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I try not to offend them. I say, we're going to Gentile you down, but it doesn't have the same impact. Gentile you up. I was stunned when students across the country, including mine, immediately celebrated the Hamas terrorist attack. Students for justice in Palestine called the terror attack a historic win for the Palestinian resistance. A Columbia professor called the Hamas massacre awesome and a stunning victory. The Yale professor tweeted, it's been an extraordinary day, while calling Israel a murderous, genocidal settler state. A Chicago art professor posted a note reading, Israelis are pigs, savages, very, very bad people, irredeemable excrement. May they all rot in hell. A U University of California Davis professor tweeted, Zionist journalists have houses with addresses and kids in school, adding they can fear their bosses, but they should fear us more. And there's so many examples. How sick can you get? This is, and, and here's the thought for you. If they do this with the Jews, mm -hmm. it's not that hard to imagine them doing that with the Christians. Why, it's right, it's the same spiritual animus. It's the same hostility. And so, you know, is there, is there a, a bright side to this um, otherwise, uh, you know, depressing dialogue? Yes, there is. Mercedes, what is it? Well, I was thinking, you know, I just end up thinking that 
What an interesting, I was thinking the inverse, okay? So all of this hate, all of this focus on one small people group and also the Christian, right? There's a lot of um, backlash that Christians face too, especially in different parts of of the world that like, don't you think the Judeo-Christian God must be the real God when those people who follow him are under persecution like that. I mean, especially the Jews, I mean, God's people, right? Like as we would read it in the old Testament. So anyways, I know there's a lot of crazy, confusing thoughts out there, but that's one thought that I had. Well, and Elon Musk had that great uh, tweet. If we could put that up for people, we'll put it up in post, but basically he's saying, this is a great moment in history, but what is that genius? What is, what is Elon seeing? What is Tony Stark seeing? The great awakening from woke has happened, he said. And this is good for civilization. He's right. We're calling those bad boy billionaires over, Red Rover, Red Rover, coming over to Jesus all the time. I'm praying for him. He's right. Civilization's waking up. You know why? Because if you're over 35, you're looking at the imbecility of the professors on the college campuses, and you're going, my God, I didn't think it was crazy when they were pushing 16 gender fluid identities. I didn't think it was crazy when they were preaching Marxism or or racial, you know, white supremacy. But man, man, when you start cheering for Al-Qaeda after they take the Twin Towers down, that's not going to go over very well. And that's exactly what's happening. The Jewish people in America are having a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. I really wonder how leftist Jews and Democratic Jews are processing this now because that videotape we played, Mm -hmm. that recording, was a gal who was formerly, I guess, Democratic Jew, a a, a liberal. A liberal Jew. She said herself, I'm a liberal Jew. So you really got to be, you know, there's a certain category, I'm sure, of of people that are going to be Jewish people that'll be seeing, you know, saying, I've said all along, you know, they're going to be sympathetic with with, with with the Hamas, but it's a... It's really going to get hard when they start saying, aren't you a Jew? Well, how do you fund the liberal Democrat ideology anymore when that's what they're aligned with? How do you, as a Jewish person, continue to fund candidates that support Well, that wait a second. Miss, uh, producer, Mr. Producer, I want to call my room back there and get this earpiece in my ear. Do you guys have that segment there that uh, Charlie Kirk had on about the Senate disruption with with uh, stinking, thinking, blinking, being interrupted by the his version of The Handmaid's Tale with all their hands painted red, interrupting the Democrats who are fighting the Democrats now. You know why? Because the, the liberal Jewish funding, and don't forget, you know, people say it's anti-Semitic to say Soros, or you got, you know, the, we got BlackRock with Larry Fink. There, there are certain Jewish individuals that have had a delirati- deleterious and a negative impact upon culture, but... That isn't to say that that is all Jewish people, because it's sort of, well, who are we listening to right now? Ben Shapiro is the best guy who's an apologetic, Alan Dershowitz. So there's, there's Jewish people on the conservative and on the leftist side. But right now, I want you to see the Democrats are having a problem, because the, the, the Jewish people that are, that are the strong influences within the progressive Marxist department of the universities and the Democratic Party, they're now dividing with the rational Jews, and the rational politicians. Take a look at this. All right, John, so... I was was just going to say, as we watch these protesters, uh, I thought this could go on for maybe uh, a half an hour or so, but they're standing up on mass now, so they'll all get bounced very quickly. They will. Well, and and that's just not there. That's also on college campuses. It's all over the place right now. And uh, what I'm saying is that there's going to be an increased division that's going to come out of this because, as Elon Musk has pointed out, there is an awakening taking place. And the awakening is that something very sick is festering on the college campuses. Now, it'll be interesting to see the influence of anti-Semitism and how far it could go in the New York Times. You know, it's interesting. I was in Jerusalem, and Annabelle and I were actually in Jerusalem, And I ran into the mother and father of the, who who were Jewish, and they were talking about, uh, about 
Actually, what were we talking about? Cosmetic surgery, I think it was we were talking about. I don't know how I got on the subject. Because she looked so young. Oh, and she goes, how old? Oh, the guy goes, how old do you think my wife is? He brought it up. He was happy to challenge me. I had, you know, I guessed your age range. He said, that's exactly, and he starts telling me about the best surgeons that they know. And I thought, this is classic. I love this Jewish conversation. Um, where to go for the best plastic surgery? And as we're, we're building rapport, he says, well, my daughter's like the senior editor at the New York Times or something. I'm thinking, well, this is interesting. His daughter's a senior editor of the New York Times. Comes back to me now, so I'm wondering, how's the New York Times going to cover this? Because it isn't like you don't have, uh, you know, certain people that are going to be Jewish Democrats over there watching the, the mounting anti-Semitism. And how do they intellectually land on this? It's going to be an interest, interesting uh, subject. Director Christopher Wray warns Congress of terror threats inspired by Hamas attack in Israel. In classic, Christopher Wrangling Ray, who is one of the problems we've got, who doesn't know if Antifa exists or where it exists and who, what, what BLM uh, rioters we're really supposed to be dealing with, and all these guys are part and parcel with the, you know, with, they're going after Catholics, checking out the Catholics because they're a potential dangerous group, you know, the pro-life Catholics. How you really have to guard your life when you're around the raging nuns in your neighborhood. But Christopher Ray warns Congress of terror threats inspired by the Hamas attack on Israel. Now, listen to this crazy thinking. The FBI director, October 31st on Halloween, said that Hamas terror attacks on Israel could motivate threats similar to those posed by ISIS. He's making the ISIS-Hamas connection. And he's concerned that those, uh, we assess that the actions of Hamas and its allies will serve as an inspiration the likes of which we haven't seen since ISIS launched its so-called caliphate several years ago, which Erdogan would like to do in Turkey. And just the past few weeks, multiple foreign terrorist organizations have called for attacks against America and the West. Well, now, why should that bother us? Could it be because we've had like around 8 million people come through the border that we haven't been able to properly identify yet? And as they're coming through the border, do you think it's possible that some of them might be Iranian, as we've caught certain terrorists from Iran, or Hamas, or Middle East uh, forces? Asked about, are you concerned about that, you know, about the terrorism threat being elevated right now in the United States with a threat of attack? It's not time to panic, he says. It's just a time to be vigilant. Not time to panic. Let me read between the lines here. He's saying... Well, with all those people in the United States, we don't know who they are. Uh, ISIS, Caliphate, uh, Hamas, they're calling for attacks, and, they, and it's all one big group, and they're calling for, you guys in America, do something, do something, do something. Tell you what, he's lying. He's trying to prepare Americans for what's already in American soil. Let's go take a quick journey over here to the board. And let me cover what I covered last week or in the last broadcast, hope you caught it. Ephesians describes something. How do principalities and powers work? We only have six minutes, so I've got to land this fast. According to the um, Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says that all of us formerly walked according to the course of this world, and that word course uh, literally is the, the mode of behavior, almost like this is how we do things, we walked along a certain way in this world according to, now, the, this is interesting, the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that works in sons of disobedience, among them we all formerly lived in the lust, listen to this, the lust, the appetites, the desires of the flesh, that is, the fallen nature, and how does that work? Indulging the desires or the passions of the flesh and the mind. So here's what we, catch this. How do these powers work? Well, I drew this picture here as a cloud here of a principality and power. And what it does is it exerts influence over people groups. And right now you're seeing the college campuses. A principality has been getting into through the ideology, the cult ideology of the university professors that have have poisoned the minds with wokeism. And wokeism is a kind of virus with five permeations. It's critical race theory. It's racial. It's socialist Marxist. It's LGBTQ skewed. And it's PLO or 
a radical Muslim sympathizing on the subject of Palestinian issues versus the Jew, as far as they're concerned, in Israel. I just gave you five tentacles that come out of one octopus, and it's on our campuses, and that spirit has reached out, kind of like an octopus over here, and it's gotten its tentacles. It's now reached in what you're seeing in London Bridge, if you can see the site of like 20,000 angry Muslims. England has a problem. Germany has a problem. France has a problem. You know what it is? They let into their countries unassimilatable, people that cannot be assimilated into their culture. Neither the language, nor the values, nor the religion, nor even the dress, the garb. And so what you see is Europe opened its arms and it brought in a people in the radical Islamic community that are incompatible with the, the legacy of Western civilization in Europe. So what you have is that principality, the prince, power of the air, which by the way, the principality, Daniel wrestled the prince of Persia. What is that? That's the Iranian principality. Curiously enough, that same spirit is working now over the Arab community in Turkey. You're seeing million people coming out angry, angry. How can they be angry? I just got done reading to you. If 51,000 Texans were slaughtered by a cartel that came over the border and then took a 2,000 families hostage and put them in tunnels and the Texas Rangers and Biden and the military have to go back and deal with the cartel and the world is cheering on the cartels against the Texans? How sick is that? Well, it is only if you look at the analogy I made. A principality creates an irrationality over the mob that's controlled by its mind and its emotions. Well, what goes into the mind that makes that happen? A big lie. If you can lie, which is what the college campuses have done, which is what the news media is doing right now, you think for a moment Al Jazeera's TV is showing footage of, of Jews that are decapitated, being burned alive, a father and a child holding the child, and then seeing them shot to death. They're not showing the pictures of, the, of what's happened with the Hamas terrorists. Or dare I say, it wasn't just the Hamas military. It was citizens that followed in the second wave that were told riot, pillage, rape, and take, and they went into the houses and jerked, you know, phones out of the wall and, and clothing out of the drawers and literally ransacked whole territory and came in. This is citizens, not the soldiers. That's like barely being discussed right now. But you see, this group here, I don't care who the group is. Right now I'm saying it's the radical Muslim. But you saw the riots that took place with, uh, with Ferguson. You saw the riots that took place in the United States. You see it now on the college campuses. So these spiritual forces plug into people. And if it's a principality and it's got a lie rooted in, notice it's in the mind and in the emotions. This is where Paul said your battle is. It's here and here. And the only thing that could possibly correct that, that's why Paul said, this is how you once walked. This is the way in which you once walked. In the lusts of your flesh, indulging the passion of your emotions that were in your body and the thoughts that were bombarding your head. Spirit can control a mob. That's why you see these mob riots and people get swept up into the rioting. You see these like flash mobs that go in with a bunch of kids running in and stealing stuff. There's something about a group psychology that causes a suspension of autonomy and individual judgment. It's like, like, like a psychological thing Jordan Peterson explains. So the mind becomes part of the target. The emotions become part of the target. And then what happens is these lead to certain behavior, such as the riot, such as violence. And so the emotions of the mind get taken up. But people don't realize there's a spirit agitating the process. What is the only thing that can create the disconnect? This is where the Bible goes. When you have the word of God in you, listen to me how this works. Your spirit actually has a force inside of it that has a governor challenging your emotions. It has a worldview that challenges your thoughts so you cast down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you bring it into captivity. Yeah, so whether it's lust, whether it's anger, whether it's revenge, whether it's jealousy, all those emotions that are so strong and toxic in the fallen nature, 
that have a thought that comes, yeah, that's right. Everything they've got was taken from you. That's why, by the way, the smash and grab, um, all that stuff is because the Marxist thinking, the BLM narrative, the campus Marxist narrative is, if you've got something and someone else doesn't have it, they didn't deserve it. They took it from you, and so you go get it back. That's basically the logic of it. It goes all the way to Stalin's um, destruction of the, the, the kulaks, which were the land-owning farmers, or Mao's destruction uh, in the Cultural Revolution. Of anyone that has something you don't have, take it, because they got it illegally under the old system, and they robbed from you. So when that thought gets out there, it gets into the mind, you got, a man you got a, a principality behind it. The emotions get stirred up. You see the behavior of a group, and you get sucked into the group. And the only thing that can disconnect it, like I said, is right here. When you have a new heart. And so the whole thing about the cross is it starts by a boom. Something new comes into my spirit. It, it creates a, a challenge to the emotions I've got and the thinking I've got and the behavior I have. And when your mind and your emotions, your behavior are actually changing, that's the process that we call conversion and sanctification. When you start coming under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you that says love is stronger than hate or fear, that's, that's why forgiveness, as Stephen is being stoned by a spirit that got a hold of his critics who were stoning the innocent man to death, his spirit rose up. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, do not lay this sin to their charge. And he gave up his spirit and fell down dead. In the crowd that day was somebody by the name of Saul of Tarsus who agreed with the stoning. But within a matter of weeks, God got a hold of him and brought him into a confrontation with the Messiah. And he became the firebrand terrorist who became the apostle. And I believe that that same possibility exists for many people that are under the influence of these principalities right now, which is why we pray for Jesus Christ to break the power of that uh, control off these mobs and off these people, to contain the madness and to bring peace to Jerusalem so that we can have an extension of grace for the United States that we don't get sucked into the vortex of world war, I think the church can make a massive difference. But I want you to see how the spirit realm works with the mob mentality. And we'll see you again tomorrow. My towels solved a problem that we've all had with towels. You go into the stores and they feel lotiony and soft, but then you get them home and they wind dry you. That's why I made my towels. They actually work, they're soft, and they absorb. And now I'm excited to announce two brand new lines of my towels. What makes them the best towels ever is they're now made with 100% long staple Shapir cotton. This is a combed ring spun cotton that makes my towels even softer and more absorbent than ever. And now you get a six piece set for an amazing introductory sale price as low as $29.98. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get my towels for only $29.98. Or you can get my designer premium line for just $20 more. Either way, you save 50% now on all my towels. They actually work. What a concept. This offer won't last long, so please order now. MyPillow.com Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code Lance to save big on all of Mike's best products. That's promo code Lance. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends. Because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.